So guys, now we will going to discuss the APIs using which we will going to work with semaphores. So to work with semaphores, first of all, you need to hash include the header file semaphore.h. And to make use of the semaphores, we need to make use of these five APIs, right? So the APIs are very much self-explanatory. You can see that you can declare a semaphore variable by using a data type sem underscore t, right? And before you invoke any operation on the semaphore in your program, you have to initialize the semaphore, right? First argument is the address of the semaphore variable which you are initializing. The second argument you can always pass as zero if you want to make use of the semaphore for synchronization of threads. If you want to make use of the semaphore for synchronization of processes, then you need to pass here any value other than zero, right? We will see how to make use of the semaphores for synchronizing the processes instead of threads in the SQL part of this course, right? So remember, semaphores can also be used for synchronization of multiple threads running on the same machine as well as semaphores can also be used for synchronization of multiple threads, which are threads of the same process. And the third argument is the initial permit number or permit counter value with which you are initializing the semaphore right so this has to be a positive value and then we have already discussed the sema wait and sema post apis the entire functionality of the semaphore relies on these two apis that is sem wait and sem post right and once we are finished with using the semaphore in our program we can destroy the semaphore using this api right so shortly we will going to exercise all these five apis when we will write a program which exercise semaphores now let us try to understand how actually semaphore works using these two APIs that is semaphore wait and semaphore post. These two APIs forms the entire functionality of the semaphores. So now let us understand how sema wait and sema post APIs work on a semaphore. So the green box on the right hand side you can visualize it as a piece of code and this smaller yellow box inside the green box is a critical section. Right? We have taken a semaphore variable and has initialized it with the generic value n. For our example, let us assume that the value of n is 3. Right? So in general, we make use of the semaphore by sandwiching the critical section between sem wait and sem post APIs. Right? So in the diagram, you can see that we have a critical section and this critical section has been sandwiched between the wait and post APIs of the semaphores. So since because we have initialized the value of the semaphores with value 3, it means that our intention is that that not more than 3 threads must execute in the critical section concurrently, right? The number of threads which are allowed to enter and execute in the critical section can be at most 3. It can be 1, it can be 2 or it can be 3 but not more than 3, right? This is the functionality of the semaphore. So now let us suppose that in the process we have three threads, thread T1, thread T2 and thread T3, right? And they are coming towards executing the critical section, right? So before entering the critical section, they encounter the API SAM wait. So let us suppose that the thread T1 executes SAM wait first, right? So the value of the semaphore will reduce from 3 to 2. The rule says that as soon as the thread executes the API SAM wait, unconditionally decrease the value of permit counter of the semaphore. So here we have unconditionally decreased the value of the semaphore from 3 to 2, right? And since the permit counter value is not less than 0, it means that the thread T1 would be able to enter into critical section and execute. After that, let us assume that the thread T2 execute the API SAM wait, right? So the value of n would further decrease from 2 to 1 and because the value of n is still greater than 0, therefore the thread T2 would also make a way to execute in the critical section. Similarly, thread T3 would reduce the value of the permit counter from 1 to 0 and thread T3 would also be able to enter into the critical section and execute. So at this point of time, the value of the semaphore has been reduced to zero. 
Now for a while if the thread T1, T2 and T3 continue to execute in the critical section and let us suppose that the fourth thread comes and the fourth thread hits the API SAM weight, right? So it will reduce the value of SEMA4 counter from 0 to minus 1, right? And since the second rule says that if the permit counter value reduces to less than 0, then the calling thread will get blocked. So here the calling thread is T4, therefore thread T4 is blocked, right? And at this point of time, the value of the SEMA4 counter is minus 1. So this is how SAM weight API works. Now let us discuss how SAM post API works. Now let us suppose that thread T1 has finished its execution in the critical section and it tends to go out of the critical section. So before going out of the critical section, the thread T1 has to execute the API SAM post, right? So the first rule says that unconditionally increase the value of permit counter of the SEMA4. It means that the value of n would become 0, right? And the second rule says that send signal to threads which are blocked on the same weight API if there is any, right? So there is thread T4 which is blocked on the same weight API. Therefore, the thread T1 will generate a signal, right? So it will generate a signal. Let us suppose that signal is generated. And thread T1 would be able to come out of this critical section, right? This signal will be delivered to any thread which is in the blocked state on the SEMA4 by the operating system, right? And as soon as this signal is delivered to the thread T4, the thread T4 will again execute the API SAM weight, right? The thread T4 will consume that signal and it will make an entry into the critical section. Right? Whenever the thread which is already blocked on the SAM weight API receives the signal, without touching the permit counter, that thread enters into the critical section. The value of the SEMA4 counter stays zero. Right? So at this point of time, we don't have a thread T1 executing in the critical section. The thread T1 is already out of the critical section. And inside the critical section, the thread T2, T3 and T4 are executing. And the value of the SEMA4 counter at this point of time is zero. And at this point of time, given the snapshot of this problem statement, you can see that the value of the permit counter justifies the situation. There is no thread which is waiting outside the critical section and the critical section is being executed to its full capacity. Therefore, the value of the SEMA4 counter is zero. Now, after some point of time, if the thread T2 finishes its work in the critical section, it will try to come out of the critical section and it will execute the API SAM post. So again, unconditionally increase the value of the permit counter and the value of the permit counter would become 1. And since there is no thread as per the rule number 2, which is blocked on the SAM weight API at this point of time, therefore no signal will be generated by the thread T2. So thread T2 would come out of this critical section without generating any signal and the value of the SEMA4 counter would be increased from 0 to 1. Right? Similarly, let us suppose that thread T3 as well as thread T4 also completes their work in the critical section and they both execute SAM post API one by one. So the value of N would be incremented from 1 to 2 and then from 2 to 3, right? And both of these threads would come out of the critical section without generating any signals because there is no thread which is in the blocked state on SAM weight API, right? So you can see that the SEMA4 counter value come back to its original value that is 3. So through this example you can see that SEMA4 has allowed at most n threads to execute in the critical section. It did never allow execution of more than 3 threads in the critical section, right? And if we execute this example for n is equal to 1, you will see that our SEMA4 works same as MUDEX, right? Our SEMA4 would allow the execution of 
at most one thread in the critical section which we already know that the same is also achieved using mute access. But the only difference is that that semaphore can be unblocked by a different thread. Whereas mutex once locked by a thread T must be unlocked by the same thread T. But that is not true in case of semaphores. If the thread T1 executes samweight API then it is not necessary that thread T1 has to execute SAM post API. Any other thread in the system, let's say thread T2, can invoke SAM post API, right? So this is the difference between binary semaphore and mutexes. Even in this example, any of the threads which are executing in the critical section can come out of this critical section when its work is done and invoke the API SAM post. Right? So it means that the invocation of the SAM post API is indeterministic. It can be executed in any order depending on in which order the threads come out of the critical section. So please note this difference between binary semaphores and mutex. Now let us write one short program using semaphores.